Every spring and every fall, it's the same thing. She's got three of these on this property. And she just likes to go in and tidy them up a little bit. Is this your little den? You got a little home in here? That's crazy. Yeah, if that looks like IMO attempt number four. Yeah, it is. Big change this time. I've drilled holes all around that box. There, you can see them there. Quarter inch holes all around the bottom, all around the sides. I went and grabbed more fungus from, uh, or mycelia from a lot of different spots on this property and put it under and around it. We're gonna give her another go. Let's get it. Well, here you go. Green lace wing eggs just arrived. They came in this bubble wrapped envelope. They came with a little ice pack in it. Arrived safe and sound. Today is Saturday around noon. I ordered them on Wednesday around noon and here they are. So I'm about ready to go take these and shake these out on the plants. Each one of these contains a thousand eggs. I only need, according to my coverage, I only need about 700, but I am going to use one full can in the greenhouse. I am going to use half a can around the greenhouse in the plants around the greenhouse, both sides, this end. Sprinkle some around on the far side. Maybe some back there in the garden. What I'm trying to do is establish a colony I may do this one more time during this grow season, but I will for sure start in the spring and I am going to probably do this three times next year. I'm sure not all of them are going to survive my winters, but the strong ones will survive and maybe I'll build myself up a little, uh, a little population of green lace wings out here. So let's go get it. All right, so I figured I'd set up the tripod. I have got 1,000 green lacewing eggs. That means I'm gonna to try to pour a quarter of this into my hand and sprinkle it along the tops of the canopies. The instructions say to mist the plants down, but as you can see, it's really overcast. It stopped raining a couple hours ago. The plants are still a little bit wet and we're supposed to get rain for like five out of the next seven days. So we went right from three weeks with not even a rain drop to now all of a sudden we're not gonna be able to handle it. So that September rain is starting early this year. So I'm going to put some of these into my hand, sprinkle them out onto the tops of the canopy. And then I'll spin the camera around and show you what I'm doing here. It's not very extremely scientific, for sure. Sprinkle a little out. And just kind of sprinkle it through the canopy.
All right, I'm gonna go and do that to the other rows. I'll kick off this camera because you're not gonna see me anyway. And we'll get on the rest of it and then we'll come through and take a look. Well, there you go. I've finally done it. Rascal Farmer laid an egg. <laughs> Dude, I've been laying eggs since this show started. <laughs> All right. They say three to ten days and these eggs are going to hatch. And it's really, really hard to see them. They're small. And they turn green, from what I've read, as they go to hatch. And I only saw a few in the canister that looked like they were big enough and green enough that they were getting ready to hatch already, so... We shall see, and I shall report back. All right, so as you can see, I definitely drilled holes all over this box. A little easier to see now that it's out of the uh, live trap that I had it in. Even down across the bottom, the whole entire bottom is loaded with holes. So it's only been four days. It hasn't been five but we're supposed to get like three quarters of an inch of rain tomorrow on day five. And it's supposed to rain steady for the next three days. So I figured that I'd take it now and I kind of took a peek on the inside. But I believe that I got it this time. I do see a couple of green spots of mold in there. Just a few. But there is mycelia and, you know, all over the whole entire box couple spots of mold but with it getting really wet and damp here over the next few days I figured that mold would just explode so I'm going to go ahead and take it now I'm going to dig into this oh yeah you can see that you can see the mycelia all the way in through there so I'm going to take the spots that have a lot of mycelia. Technically, it probably could have stayed out there for another day or two. Um, and there would have been a lot more growth. But being that it's going to be wet, I'd rather have some than none. So I'm going to go grab my scale, grab my brown sugar, and weigh this out. Equal parts brown sugar to rice. And then uh, jar it up. All right, guys. While, while I'm mixing this up, I wanted to give you a look at it. Look at this. I have a success that is not wet, it's still granular, it's all mixed up. Now I'm going to jar that up and I'll put a little cap of brown sugar on it. And there you go, that is IMO2, the seed of everything else that comes after it. Well hopefully this shows up, it is Sunday evening. The sun has gone down. We're in kind of twilight. Somebody's taking some target practice in the twilight down there. Just watching the ladies go to sleep. It's kind of interesting because at this time of day you can really see some things that you don't see when the sun's directly on them. Like uh, those spots of PM on this cherry gasm. A couple right up there. I'll come back out here tomorrow. A couple right there. You won't even see any on this plant at all. And so far this is the only one that I found it on. But the cherry gasm and the velvet hammer. They've been really, really PM hounds along with the green ice. But this is kind of crazy. Check this out. Look at how hard the Nom Nom sleeps. It almost looks like it's just like dried out. The leaves just droop as soon as the sun goes down. <laughs> I've never had a plant that sleeps this hard. And the green ice in flower. Well, should only be a few days and uh, 
We're gonna hatch ourselves some little baby alligators and let those green lace wings go to town. Just figured I'd show you the plants. Sleeping. Yeah, they're getting ready for the upcoming hunting season in November, so they're doing some evening shooting. The cheese. Peace, y'all. Well, I'm getting the flower room all cleaned out. The males are gone. I have misted down all of the walls and the floor with water once. And I'm going to do it another time. But in the meantime, I am working on that powdery mildew with the help of that silver box right there. So, what is that silver box? Well, that silver box is a photocatalytic oxidation. Well, hell, let me get over there and explain this to you. Oh, that's better. Over here where you can see me. Basically what this is, is this is an air purifier. Um, years ago in our retail store, we worked with uh, air filtration. We worked with some mold remediation guys. And if you were having a problem with a flood or a mold damage, they would pull in some kind of an ozone generator, which is what this is. But this, this is a neat unit. This is made by a company called Sun Air. Um, we had to track the guy down who used to own the company. Um, I'm not even sure if you can get this unit anymore. But what this has inside it is a ballast and a UVC bulb. And what this UVC bulb does is it reacts with a coating on this metal, which is titanium dioxide or titania. And when it reacts and it shines on that metal, it gives off an electron. So electrons pour out the front of this. And what these electrons do is go through the air and they rip apart water molecules into hydroxyl ions. And basically, these ions go out and attack much larger particles, turning them into carbon dioxide and water vapor, such as mold, mildew, viruses. It'll oxidize it all. Next to fire, ozone is the world's second, nature's second greatest purifier. I've actually got this machine on. Um, a downside with uh, photocatalytic oxidation is part of this process when it rips apart these, um, these uh, water molecules is that it does give off low levels of ozone and ozone can be a respiratory ir irritant, uh, it can irritate your mucous membranes like your nose, your eyes, um, you don't want to be breathing high levels of it. Generally they may wear masks when they're working with it but it's, I'm fine in this space right here but let me uh, show you what this looks like. And you can kind of see that blue glow, and that's it. It's a UVC bulb. And hopefully I'm going to turn this back on and not totally screw up that video. If I do, I'm going to do another sign-off because I'm just about ready to get the hell out of here. Um, but it got me wondering why in the heck we don't build some kind of technology like this into lighting fixtures or why the cannabis industry hasn't latched onto it. I know if you do run this with your plants and the levels are too high, like with sulfur, you will burn your plants. I mean, you can ozone burn a plant, no problem. But uh, this is what I'm using to uh, rid this area of spores. I have been uh, running the dehumidifier. I've been running the air cleaner. Um, all my fans, my heaters, every single thing that I've been using, I've been passing ozone through it, and I've been now running this thing for three days. So I'm going to go through and do another cleanup. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, attack this whole space again. It's been running out there in the utility room, so it got the veg tent. That air blows into here, and it's got in this room as well. So clones upstairs are looking really good. So. I'm pretty stoked and totally stoked about all this pollen collecting and getting ready to do some breeding. Um, next Tuesday, 
is the day after Memorial Day. I am out of town on Saturday and Sunday, um, coming back on Monday afternoon. There is no way that I'm going to be able to post a show next Tuesday. So no show next Tuesday. The following Saturday, I'm going to be down in Clio, Michigan at the High Times Cannabis Cup. So we should get some video and uh, I should be able to put together a really good show when I come back from Clio. So for all of you going down to the Cannabis Cup in Clio, I will see you there for the rest of you. I will see you a week from Tuesday. Like, so, two weeks from when I post this. Ah, hell, you know what I mean. All right, guys, you know what to do. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'm the Rascal Farmer. We'll catch you guys right back here next time in the No-Till Lab. Peace, y'all.